This is the podcast for the journal Neuropsychopharmacology. I'm Cynthia Graber. After a traumatic event, women are more likely to be diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Research has been conducted on what might be causing this higher rate of diagnoses. For instance, perhaps women had more cumulative trauma in their lives than the men in question. But scientists say that even taking prior childhood trauma into account, women are still diagnosed at a higher rate than men. And it's important to identify what exactly this is, as it can help us identify who is more likely to be at risk for PTSD following trauma and can help us understand biological mechanisms of PTSD. And so this led to us wanting to look at the influence of sex on this relationship between brain volumes um, and PTSD symptoms. Alyssa Ruckner is a neuroscience PhD candidate at Emory University. She's in the lab of Dr. Jennifer Stevens, assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at Emory University. They are two of the authors of a recent study in NPP titled Sex-Dependent Risk Factors for PTSD, a Prospective Structural MRI Study. In healthy individuals, there seem to be differences between men and women in their brains in regions associated with fear responses, such as the amygdala, which are also regions densely populated with hormone receptors. But there haven't been a lot of studies looking at the difference in thickness of various regions and finding correlations between those differences and the response to trauma. So for this study, the team worked with the Grady Trauma Project, which studies trauma and stress in the Atlanta area. They had 90 participants who were brought into the emergency room after a traumatic experience and agreed to be followed for one year post-trauma. They conducted MRI scans of the participants' brains one month after trauma, which was the earliest participants could lie on their back for a brain scan, and they measured the severity of PTSD symptoms at one month and then six months after the trauma using the PTSD Symptom Scale, or PSS. So, Alyssa, how did you then analyze your data? Using this data, we ran some regression models to test for sex um, and region of interest interaction effects. So seeing how does sex influence the relationship between cortical thickness and subcortical volume and six-month PTSD symptoms. And so we ran these regression models looking for sex interaction effects. And if we found significant sex interaction effects, we then split things up by the PSS subscales, avoidance, numbing, hyperarousal, intrusive symptoms, and then also looked at depression symptoms using um, the Beck depression inventory. And then looked at, okay, what were the significant correlations in female versus male participants? And so what we found after we did these analyses is that we didn't see any significant sex interaction effects for the dorsal ACC, the hippocampus, or the amygdala. But what we did see was there was this significant sex interaction effect for the right rostral ACC um, in that there was a positive correlation for female participants and not male participants. Um, And so what that means is that early right rostral ACC thickness, um, greater early right rostral ACC thickness in women meant greater PTSD symptoms at six months. What does that particular region of the brain do? Yeah. So the rostral ACC is an area that has to do with um, emotional regulation. And so um, it is involved in providing some top-down control of the amygdala. So kind of tampering down on um, our fear responses. Did anything in these results surprise you, Dr. Stevens? Yes. So in terms of what we know about brain morphological features that are associated with post-traumatic stress disorder in the broader literature, probably the most highly replicated finding is this association with lower hippocampal volume. So in many, many studies, Um, there has been found this association between higher PTSD symptoms and lower hippocampal volume, which is hypothesized to be um, related to a history of chronic stress. And so there have been a couple of studies looking at the relationship between hippocampal volume uh, early after trauma and whether that is a risk factor for later PTSD. And for the most part, those studies have found no findings, so no association between early hippocampal volume and later PTSD symptoms you know, our findings were quite similar to that. But what is also found in the literature is that people with post-traumatic stress disorder often show 
difficulties in regulating fear responses and that this is associated with reduced communication between the rostral anterior cingulate or ventromedial prefrontal cortex and the amygdala. And so if anything, I, I think that we would have predicted that thinner rostral anterior cingulate cortex would have been a risk factor for later PTSD. But in fact, we found that thicker cortex in this brain region that's very important for emotion regulation was the risk factor and that this was isolated to our population of women and wasn't seen at all in men. In fact, in men, there was no correlation, but there was a slight downward trend. Why do you think you found a kind of flipped result compared to previous studies? Yeah, so there haven't really been studies that have looked at kind of the the longitudinal correlations going on. And so looking at early cortical thickness in this case, predicting later PTSD symptoms, this is um, different than what has been done in the past um, regarding looking at sex differences. I would also just add that a lot of the prior work that's been done to really set up the biomarkers that we understand to be associated with post-traumatic stress disorder was initially done in male military samples. And that has set the expectations for what we expect the brain features of PTSD to be. But here in this case, we really highlighted the fact that the risk factors for PTSD can look quite different in women than the way that they look in men. Clearly, one of the challenges of doing trauma research is that you can't easily image or study the brain before trauma occurs, so it's difficult to link the two in terms of causality. But even with this caveat, what do you think the implications of these findings are? What could this lead to? So I think that one of the most exciting potential avenues for this type of longitudinal research is that once we identify early biomarkers that can predict who's at risk for post-traumatic stress disorder, that If those are modifiable features, we may be able to target, for example, a particular brain region with a novel early intervention, which might prevent the onset of post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. So fully preventing people from ever developing these chronic and debilitating symptoms. And what our findings suggest is that these early interventions may need to be tailored to women or men specifically. And that's not going to be the case for every different mechanism that you might want to think about in terms of a risk factor. But here, this suggests that, you know, if women already have greater cortical thickness in a region that is involved in emotion regulation, then we may not want to be targeting strategies um, towards women that involve an early intervention to boost the function of these prefrontal regions that might be you know, neurotrophic within these brain regions the same way that we might have if we had only um, continued to focus on risk factors in men. Alyssa? I would just say that in regard to research in this area, we definitely need to continue looking at sex differences and also looking at the PTSD symptom subtypes. And we definitely need more longitudinal MRI work done to explore differences in how the brain changes following a traumatic event. I'd also just like to highlight that the translational element is not the only future direction for this research. So if we want to go in a more mechanistic direction, our findings kind of beg the question, well, why? You know, why is it that thicker rostral anterior cingulate is a risk factor in women, but not men? What's different about the brains of women versus men? And so I think um, that's a really important avenue of research that um, we need to track down. And so a lot of the future work that we're conducting in our lab focuses on trying to investigate the influences of hormonal fluctuations on brain structure and function and really focusing on how that might influence stress-related psychopathology in women. This is the podcast for the journal Neuropsychopharmacology. To read the paper discussed in the podcast, go to www.nature.com/npp. I'm Cynthia Graber.